If you have been an avid subscriber, you know that my very first video, like my personal video in this channel, is me making a croissant dough. And I extremely failed, and I wanna do it again. So while I'm doing all of these chocolate chip goodness, I think I want to laminate a dough. With a croissant, you have to do a folding process. So basically, we call it laminating process. You have your dough, you put your butter, and then you fold it, and then you roll it, and then you fold it again, and then you roll it, fold it. That's why it has like different layers. So that's where I extremely failed last time because my butter just melts super fast, and whenever I try to roll it, it's just like oozing out the dough so I'm gonna try it again but I'll start with the butter first and then so on so I hope this is a success because I've been baking 2020 has been a baking year for me and I know better now <laughs> I know a lot more a lot more about baking than I did when I first started that dough recipe that's like my first phase of like baking period so let's let's try to do it again. I am extremely nervous, but I think we're gonna we're gonna be successful this time. So let me just get some whatever. There. So as you can see, I have a parchment paper. I have some butter right here and a rolling pin. So for a croissant dough. For a croissant in general, you, hate, you need to have a high quality butter so it wouldn't melt easily. But since I don't have that, we're just gonna use whatever butter that I have. It should be unsalted. I have like the Costco brand butter. So we'll just work on what we have. But if you have an option, the best, the best butter is the Kerrygold butter. It's quite expensive. I think it's $4 for a cup of butter, but it is extremely good. Um, any Irish butter would do, as long as it's unsalted. So, you need to have a layer of butter. So for this recipe, I have, I will just slice this in half, okay? And put it here. Mm -hmm. I am extremely nervous because this has been a recipe that I've been trying to perfect over the year, not over the years, over the, the past um, quarantine period, but I just, I'm just failing to do so. But we'll do it again and hopefully it will be a success. I know better now, you know. Okay, put it, fold this. So it should be eight. Ten. butter it's eight by <laughs> it's eight by ten um, the size is eight by ten and it's a little bit melty so I'm going to put this on the fridge um, until I need to use it so next step is the dough process Now I'm prepping the dry ingredients for the dough. It is important that you have a good quality food scale to make sure that all measurements are accurate. A croissant dough is very simple because it's all about the butter. So for the dough, all you need to have is flour, yeast, salt, sugar, water, and milk. That's it. 
So now I'm mixing the water and the milk together in a glass bowl or a glass cup because we have to heat it in the microwave before we add it to the dough mixture. So I pop it in the microwave for about one minute just to make it look warm. Um, if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast, so just be careful. Now it's time to mix. So it's seven minutes on medium and 13 minutes on high until you get this consistency. Now let's prep the dough for the first proofing process. So in a tray, put on some parchment paper. Place the dough in the middle and stretch it out until you have a flat, rectangular shape. So I do this so it's easier for us to roll the dough into shape later on because once the dough is proof later, it is hard to mold it into the shape that you desire. So now cover it with plastic wrap and place it in the fridge overnight. See you tomorrow! Good morning guys! Good morning, good morning, good morning! Happy Valentine's Day! Today is Sunday, Feb 14, 2021. And I just woke up and it's 8... 8.30 in the morning. Um, I wanted to sleep later but it's Valentine's Day and Bert and I plan to have a breakfast for me and then dinner date for him, um, we, we look for a place that is in the Philippines and also here in the States and we can order from the same restaurant and we can eat together. Um, so the only restaurant that I can find that is available here and available in the Philippines is McDonald's. So I'm eating McDonald's for breakfast and he's eating McDonald's for dinner. So that's our Valentine's Day. Um, very cheesy simple but that's that's how we like it um fun fact mcdonald's is actually our first date back to business. So sprinkle some flour in the counter so your dough will not stick to the counter. And that is actually one of the trick here. The more flour, the better because once it's stuck in the go. counter, it is over, you guys. So sprinkle, 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 pat, 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 and also put some flour on your rolling pin so it wouldn't stick to your dough. Now it's time for my least favorite part of this recipe, which is laminating the dough with the butter. I hate this because the butter is very stubborn. It's either too cold that it cracks or too melty that it just oozes out of the layers, if that makes sense. Okay, so basically what I did here is I placed the butter in the middle, cut the sides, and put it at the top of the butter. So you now have two layers of dough. So now on to the rolling process or the laminating process. So you roll the dough with the butter. I like pushing it down first and then rolling it so the butter and the dough will not separate as much. So now I'm doing the folding process. We call this the book fold. You can slow down if it's too fast. And wrap it with a plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, put it out from the fridge and we will do the same process again. So make sure that the tuck is on the side, not on the ends, because it will affect how your honeycomb will turn out after you bake it. So push it and then roll it until it is flat. 
and ready for a book fold. You'll see how it looks like. So most people actually are very perfectionist when it comes to croissants. Like they measure every length, every width, and every fold that they do. But I'm just winging it at this moment. <laughs> In Filipino, tancha tancha lang. And then do another book fold. And there you have it. Wrap it and then put it in the fridge. Again, after another 20 minutes, it's time for the last final fold, which I've been waiting for for a day and a half already. So I'm pretty excited. I can't wait on how this croissant will turn out. So basically, I'm just trying to roll it as thinly as I can because if you have your croissant, you don't like it to be super thick and not fluffy. So the thinner, the better. But this is a little bit tricky. So exhibit A, the butter melted so much because I've been rolling it for a while. So it is sticking to the counter, so I have to put it back to the fridge so the butter will get solid again. And while that is chilling in the fridge, I am now making my almond filling for my almond croissant. So I just mixed almond flour, butter, sugar, vanilla, and eggs. And that's it, as simple as that. And just mix, 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 mix. And this is it. The tornado. We will now do a last roll and we will cut it into triangular pieces. So just roll it as thinly as you can. Try to make it as a perfect rectangle. So what I do is I will cut the ends so it is a perfect rectangle. I do this because I want to have a perfect triangle <laughs> so apologies because I don't have a ruler so I'm just using my measuring tape and then as for the triangles I'm actually just eyeballing it because I don't have patience to measure it I mean I already waited overnight just for the dough so I'm just so excited to see how this will turn out so I just cut like a piece in the middle Slice it in the middle and then roll it gently. Just look at that. Look at how perfect it turned out. Oh my god. And then now I'm just taking a right amount of my almond filling and lathering it into the triangle. And then just roll it after just like what you did in the first few croissants. Like look at those cuties. Isn't it pretty? Now on to the second proofing process. So put it in the tray and then coat it with milk so it wouldn't dry up. And then put it in the oven. Don't turn on the oven, just put it there to keep it warm until it's double the size. You know that it's ready to bake when it jiggles. Look at that. And then when it's ready, coat it with an egg wash. So it's just one egg. Coat it everywhere, every corner. So it will create that golden brown finish. And then for the almond croissant, coat it with the almond filling and sprinkle some almonds at the top. Oh, so pretty! And then now it's time for the oven at 393 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius. Oh my god, it's turning brown! And there you have it. So beautiful. And then now I'm just sprinkling some icy sugar, icing sugar at the top of the almond croissant. 
and just listen, listen. Oh my god! And look at the honeycomb. Look at the honeycomb. Look at the honeycomb. Those layers. I'm finally done with baking. I already ate the regular one and the almond one. It's so good. Mmm. God. I'm so proud of myself. I knew I would do better this time. I hope you like this video watching me not fail this time. <laughs> and if you guys want to see more of me baking, just comment down below which dish you want me to make next. If you love this video, if you like this video, or if you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe to be updated with my next videos. Bye!